Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, it all depends on where you're watching this tutorial from. And um, first of all, I want to say, should I say happy quarantine, happy isolation, or happy sit at home? Okay, and um, I also want to believe that you've been enjoying the tutorials on this platform, and that is the reason why you're back. And I promise to keep bringing um, easy way to handle process simulation with Aspen Hysis. And today we'll be considering pipeline simulation as requested by most of my subscribers. Okay, so we're going to be handling pipeline simulation with Aspen Hysis. And um, we're going to walk in, uh, as, as you can see on the screen, um, we're going to be transporting gas from point A to point B. All right. From point A to point B, and um, the gas coming out from the plant, the process plant at point A, is coming out with 24.24 bar, and um, the point B, this line is supposed to be, is going to be tied to a trunk line, um, a 48 inch trunk line. Okay, and um, all we want to do is to make sure that the pressure entering that trunk line is 84 bar. So we want to transport. Um, a process gas from point A to point B and maintain a particular pressure. So what we want to do now is to try and um, run the simulation on on um, the pipeline that will carry this process gas from point A to point B. You understand? Now since this pressure is at 24.4 bar, we need to compress the gas to 84 bar. Okay, to 84 bar because the maximum required here is 84. Okay, let's say the range of pressure between 76 bar and 84 bar so we we'll have to compress the um the gas to 84 bar which is the maximum and try and see how we can run the simulation in the pipeline in such a way that the process gas that will come out at point b will be between the minimum and the maximum required pressure at this point do you understand so let's go straight to our aspen hysis and we'll be working with aspen hysis version 11 okay version 11 so from um the early classes we had i've already taught us how to add process um com components as a components i've also taught us how, how to select um uh um fluid packages okay and how to define composition so we're not going to be wasting a whole lot of time on that so the process guard, gas components that will be adding, uh, we have carbon dioxide, we have nitrogen, we have methane, we have ethane, we have propane, isobutane. So we're going to be adding all of that. So I'm trying to create a new um, simulation case. So it's it's coming up. Let's give it a little time. It's coming up. Okay. Just a little time. All right, so it's up. All right, so we're going to be adding components. Adding components. All right, so we have um, CO2. We have CO2. We have nitrogen. Just um, give me a little time. Just a little time. All right. So we've um, succeeded in adding the um, components. We have um, this, um, CO2, nitrogen, methane, ethane, propane down to C7 plus. So say that fluid package. We'll be using pengrobinsane. Yeah, we'll be using pengrobinsane because we're working with hydrocarbons mainly. Okay, so Pengrobinson. So everything about the simulation business manager has been fully defined. So we'll go straight to the simulation environment. Okay, so uh, we're going to define our process gas at point A. Define our process gas at point A. So call this process gas. gas uh, this pressure 
temperature is um, 25, 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, the pressure is 24.4, rather, bar. Okay, so we'll go straight to composition. Okay, so added the compositions of the individual components. Okay, so the flow rates, um, the flow rate is uh, 60 million scoff. Yes, 60 million scoff per day. Okay. Sixty million scoff per day. Okay. Um, okay. Of oh, sixty. Okay, so our process gas is fully defined. Uh, like I said, we're trying to compress this gas, or we're trying to deliver this gas as, at 84 uh, bar, bar pressure. That's bar A. So I'll try to compress this particular gas. Okay. So let's compress the gas. I have the process gas coming in. I don't need to go into details on how to run your simulation um, compressed gas run your com uh, compressor sim simulation you can go back and check how to do that the story is already on the channel so you can go back and check that it will go a long way to help you on how to handle that okay so we're compressing to 84 bar 84 bar okay so still on the efficiency we're using a reciprocating compressor and um, efficiency 90% efficiency all right so as you can see the um, temperature here is very 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 high it's about 241.8 degree Fahrenheit that's the temperature of the compressed gas which is very high it's out of normal so what it means is we have to we have to bring in an air cooler all right we have to bring in an air cooler to drop the temperature but we won't be doing that we'll just try to pass this um gas stream through the pipeline like that okay but just have it in mind that you we supposed to have a cooler down here either you're using your propane refrigeration loop system or you're using your normal cooler or you want to use your air cooler okay or using it um using boiler feed water to do your cooling it all depends on what you want to do so now let's get uh pipe segment okay so let me bring in our pipe so we have two types of pipe we have the gas pipe i will have the pipe segment as for the pipeline this is for gas pipeline this is for general pipeline okay so after this we're going to run a simulation model on this also in another tutorial okay so we'll get this out all right so this is our pipeline so remember 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 our focus remember our tack targets our target is to take this from 24 from um 24 bar to 84 right i'll have 84 here so let's see if we transport this gas across a 2.5 kilometer um pipeline length okay let's see what the pressure drop will be depending on the type of uh, pipeline schedule that will select that's the, the nominal diameter of the pipeline that will select okay so let's see that okay so we have our inlet gas to be comp so we'll call this let's call this delivery delivery gas or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it delivery gas okay so this uh definitely some energy we lost in the system so we'll call this per q you can give it any name you want to give it all right so let's add our segment now we want to transport this across a 2.5 kilometer length that's 2500 meter so um and we know that there's no way we can have a pipe as long as 2.5 um kilometer so we're going to use segments all right now we, i want to break this into four segments that's a pipeline of 500 okay let's say five segment 500 meters each all right for your own simulation it all depends on what you want to work on so i have to append um five segments click on append segments so have about five segments okay four already so add one more we'll define all of them 
all of them remember i said each of the length should be 500 that will make up for five times five um 500 times five is 2500 so we'll have 500 meters 500 meters each okay 500 500 okay so now we have to define each of these so I highlight on segment one click on view segment all right so we have um, when you click on view you have your pipe info so you have to define your pipe info select your pipe schedule actual pipe and then select your type type of schedule that you want so we're going to be using schedule 80 you should 80 okay you can use any schedule remember we'll have the pipe we'll have the pipeline schedule schedule charts all right which works with wall thickness the pipe wall thickness so in the real sense you're supposed to calculate run your wall thickness um, calculation then use the thickness of your pipeline to select the schedule then use the schedule to run your simulation all right so here the nominal diameter let's use um we're going to be using um, 10 inch pipeline okay we we'll use 10 inch yeah we we'll use 10 inch pipeline that's 250 millimeter all right so this is a 10 point that's 10 inch outer diameter pipeline okay so we're going to do the same for all the segments we'll do the same for all the segments all right okay so you do the same for all of them okay we've defined the um, internal and outer diameter of the pipeline all right you can also select the type of material pipe material okay for this reason my steel when you're done with your uh, material selection you can come here and select the type of material that you want the roughness of the pipeline um the pole, pipe wall conductivity and all of that now another thing i would like to show you is um the elevation change okay now if you know the topography of the line where of the land where you're laying the pipeline you know if um the land is smooth that is flat or it's it goes up and down okay if the land topography let's say you have an elevation of about um, five meter up okay it will be positive five that's five you have to write five here and maybe um where you want to lay the second pipe it has to go down two meters okay two meters down it will be minus two minus two okay and it continues like that all right but for the sake of this tutorial we're going to assume that the topography is flat all right which in the real sense it's it's very rare to have that so we're going to be assuming this is a flat for the sake of this tutorial okay so we're done with that now we have to specify the heat transfer information excuse me heat transfer information so under the heat transfer we have the heat loss have the heat loss we have um all right sorry about that okay we have the heat loss we have the overall htc you have the segment htc you have the estimate htc all right so now we're going to estimate the um heat transfer coefficient because we don't know the overall heat transfer for now but we definitely know um the uh, ambient temperature of the environment you want to lay your pipe so uh, depending on where you where you are here in nigeria our ambient temperature is between um 25 okay most times from 24 25 to about 30 so we use an ambient temperature of 25 degrees celsius all right so that's that now the next thing include your pipe hole thickness that is in estimating the heat transfer coefficient uh, we are telling HiSys to include the pipe pole. We should put the pipe pole into consideration. Also, we want it to put the a to include the inner um, heat transfer coefficient into consideration too. Okay. Now another thing that um, if you're going to be insulating your pipeline, if you want to run pipe pole insulation, you have to um, include insulation. Then put the type of um, insulating material you will be using. All right, for this particular scenario, we won't be doing um, that. We won't be doing that. So for now, um, please just give me a second. Give me a second. So just, just give me a second, please. Um, please just give me a second.
oh sorry about the delay my mouse was malfunctioning so i had to change it okay so like i was saying um you can include your insulation for instance if i want to insulate this material i have to choose the type of insulation i have to um put the thickness of the insulation but we are not insulating this material okay so now if we are to bury this pipeline for instance if this pipeline is going to be buried underground all i need to do is include outer htc then i'll put the depth buried that's the buried depth of the pipeline here okay but we are not burying the pipeline but if you want to do it you can just put the buried depth right here and put if it's two meter below the ground if it is um below the sea level it all depends okay uh, if it's like well, the ambient medium is ground all right um it could be sea all right so it could it could be water that it could be air so it can be hanging so all of that so all you need to do is select the ambient medium um the ground type is dry pits if it's wet pits you can as well do that um put the buried depth and all of that but we are not putting this into consideration all right so now let's check the um let's check if we're able to achieve what we wanted to achieve okay so let's go straight to the delivery gas so the pressure of the compressed gas going through the pipe um uh the, the, the pipeline is 84 bar and as you can see, all we have is 82.94 bar, which is within the range, the required range at the tying point. Do you understand? So that's all you need to do to run your pipe, pipe pipeline simulation. It's as simple as that. So the next tutorial is going to be on how we can run our pipe hydraulic analysis still on this same project. All right. So we'll continue from this project in the next tutorial where we'll have to work on the pipe hydraulics and also we'll do another tutorial on the flow assurance and um, how to um, do your flow assurance analysis using the pipe segment um, in Aspen Isis. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Just sorry for the irregularities. I um, a lot of things were not going and fine. My mouse was malfunctioning. So but just go through it and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel it's very important so you could get uh, more tutorial videos uh, thank you very much for your time okay